Hi there, it's Lee here for iMineBlocks. Welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to mine Zcash on your Windows-based machine. So Zcash is a new cryptocurrency that is being made available on the 28th of October. At the moment, what we can do is we can do some test mining, but after the actual 28th of October, you'll basically be able to use uh, exactly the same process to mine the real Zcash coins. So what we can do is we can get a slight head start on that and um, yeah, basically get everything set up ahead of time so that as soon as the network goes live, so we can jump right in there and um, mine some coins and hopefully make some profit. So I'm going to be sharing that with you um, in this video, of course. So let's uh, continue on and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So the first thing we need to do is download uh, one of the available miners. At the moment, there is kind of only one or two available. There's one available for um, Linux, uh, Ubuntu, and there's one available for Windows, um, but both of these are made by NiceHash. So what that means is that if we're using this miner, what it will actually do is it will connect to the NiceHash network. It will mine Zcash, but it will basically sell it directly for Bitcoins. So once there is a new of a, um, a separate miner available where you can directly mine Zcash and keep Zcash um, in your wallet, um, I'll upload another video of that accordingly. But at the moment, like I say, this is uh, a way where we can sort of mine Zcash, but it's going to be exchanged directly for Bitcoin. So that might be beneficial actually to some people. So what we need to do is we need to download the actual miner itself. So I'll put a link in the actual description where you can download it from. And this is the actual nice hash uh, GitHub repo, um, but I'll put a direct link in the description for you, um, and I'll include one or two extra files in there to help you get started. So you just download it using the link that I uh, give you. Then you need to go to uh, your downloads folder, and in there you'll find a zip file, which is the one that you've just downloaded, of course. Then you want to right click and you just want to extract it to another folder doesn't really matter where, you can put it on your desktop or wherever you like. I'm just going to leave it in a downloads folder just for simplicity. So it is the NHEQ miner. So we're just going to go and find that folder now, which is this one. So you'll see in yours, there should be a total of um, five files. But what I'll actually do is I'll add these two extra files in there for you to help you get started. Um, because if you download from the GitHub repo, these are not included. Um, and you might have a hard time starting the actual miner itself. So inside these two actual mining programs, they both basically do the same job. Um, the only difference between the two is one supports the AVX um, code set and the other one supports the SSE2 code set. So for most people, if you've got a newer CPU, the one that's been made in the last sort of two to three years, um, it should support AVX. Um, if it doesn't, if you've got an older CPU, then you want to use the SSE2 um, code set there. So on my system, I have a Intel i7-950, um, and that actually doesn't support AVX. So I need to use the SSE2. Um, but like I say, just, just try with the AVX. If not, then go to the SSE2. So these batch files, there's two of them, and they're both basically the same inside, just like, say, one calls the SSE2 program and the other one calls the AVX program. Um, also, just to make you aware, you need a 64-bit version uh, of Windows to run this. So let's open up the actual batch file, and I'll show you what's inside. So this is basically going to be the command line to run the actual miner itself. So I'll just break it down uh, for you step by step. So you've got the first part is the nice hash miner, like I say it's x64 and it's the ssc2.exe. So that's the miner that we're calling. And then all of this part is basically configuration. So we've got space dash L and that stands for location. So it's basically the nice hash server that you want to connect to, what region it's going to be in. So there's um, four different regions, I believe. Um, I know that there is uh, USA, EU, and Russia, which is the uh, RU. I think they might also have an Asia one as well, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, so you, that's something that you guys just need to double check. Um, at the time of actually making this video, um, the EU server did not work. Um, so I'm just using it with a USA server. Um, that seems to work well for me. 
The next part is dash u, so it's basically our username. So we've got dash u space. Then the next part is this first part here, up to the uh, dot or period, is our Bitcoin address. So you need a Bitcoin address in order to use this miner, even though it's a Zcash miner, because like I say, exchange is Zcash for Bitcoins directly. So the first part is our Bitcoin address, then we've got a dot, and then the second part is our nickname or worker name. So you just want, you know, worker one, worker two, worker three, whatever. And what it means is that if you actually log into the nice hash website, you can enter your Bitcoin address and then it will show you uh, worker one's performance or worker two's um, hash rate and so on. So it's just an easy way for you to track your um, how your machine is running. Um, the last little part is for the actual um, CPU cores that you want to use. So I would say use a little bit of experimentation with this. If you've got two cores, then try a threads. So this is dash uh, T, which is threads, um, or cores is another way to look at it. And in this case, we've only got one. So if you've got like a four core CPU, and there's a little bit of extra detail, I'll give, I'll give that to you in just a second. So if you've got a four core CPU, then you probably want to use uh, threads free. Um, and that'll mean that the actual miner is using three threads, but you've kind of got one left for your system, so you still be able to surf the internet and things like that. Um, of course, if you want just a dedicated miner and you've got four cores, you probably want to use four threads, and that will basically mean your CPU will be completely maxed out mining um, Zcash using this miner. The other thing to consider is that some uh, CPUs, uh, for example, my CPU as well, and uh, a lot of the new ones um, support hyper-threading, so that's kind of like you get four cores and then you get four virtual cores. So with my one is a four core CPU, but like I say, you get four extra virtual cores as well. So I might want to use uh, seven threads, or if I wanted to really max out, I could use like eight threads, even though it's technically only a four core CPU. So just experiment with the actual uh, number of threads and you'll kind of um, see different results. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run it with um, six threads just because that someone recommended that in the actual readme. So technically this will be using three cores and leaving one remaining. Um, hopefully that makes sense. I, I rambled on a little bit there. So I'm just going to save that um, and then close it. And then we're just going to run the actual program there. So you can see it starts at the top. It's got some information connected to the server and then you can see it starts with our threads. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and then it just starts getting work from the actual server itself. So you can see it's accepting and submitting, which is great. And then you could start seeing the actual speed in this yellow text. So it's 0.22 hashes per second at the moment. And over the next sort of minute, you should see that it actually sort of picks up in speed. So yeah, we're now at 0.4. Not point seven, and that should increase um, uh, until a point where it sort of kind of uh, levels off, and that will give you a more realistic uh, mining rate. Uh, one other thing you can do as well, I'll just um, show you quickly, is um, if we just um, open this, I'll put this um, in there as well. Um, what it is is there is actually a, a benchmarking option. So oh, I'll actually leave this uh, file in there as well. Um, just so you can do a benchmark um, of your system. So it's um, it's going to benchmark the SSE2 version, but you can do it with you know just change this part to AVX if you want to benchmark the AVX. Um, so I'm just going to run that now, and what it should do is it should just give us a basically benchmark of our actual CPU, and then that way we don't have to wait for it to kind of connect to the network and and download lots of work before it actually gives us a more realistic result. Okay, so that didn't actually work. It has worked on on the uh, 
Linux version, but that didn't work in that case, which is a little bit disappointing. Anyway, that might work for you, it may not. So just try and see, see what happens. I'm not sure why that closed that actually. Let me put a, that should stop there. The box closing after it's finished. Maybe that's why. Actually, I'm just, I'm just gonna try it again. So I wanna just see whether it gives us a result or not. Oh yes, it did. So yeah, just because I didn't have that pause, uh, to basically to keep the actual command window open. So you can see here that we've got the speed is 4.84 hashes per second. And uh, like I said, the actual CPU is a i7-950. So use that as a kind of a basis for your own. You'll be able to you know, do some calculations, work out your profit and that kind of thing. See whether your CPU is faster or slower. And um, yeah, you'll have a comparative basis. So hopefully that is useful to you as well. So that just about sums everything up that I wanted to show you in this video. Hopefully you found it useful and uh, interesting. If you have, please give it a like. If you like this kind of video and you're not already a subscriber, um, please consider subscribing because I do upload videos like this on a regular basis. I um, love sharing this kind of uh, content with you. If you have any questions or comments, as always, just put those in the comments box below and I'll be sure to get back to you guys. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.